Hey guys, it's Kimberly from Keep the Tail Wagging, and I am here with Trisha Woodier of, oh, and I just completely forgot, Baby Steps to Healthier Pets, Peoples, and Homes. <laughs> Yay, I did it. <laughs> so, and we are here to talk about the keto diet for dogs. I get questions every week about keto diets, and the only thing I know about the keto diet is that it's high fat, moderate protein, low carb, and that is it. I know that dogs that are, you know, have cancer are doing very well on a keto diet. I know that some people try to get their dogs into ketosis just as a healthier part of life because their thought is that animals in the wild um, have periods of fasting naturally, and so our dogs should too because it helps to restart their gut and their immune system. But there, that's all I know. So okay. I want to talk to someone, not so much an expert in a keto diet, but actual a pet parent who is feeding a keto diet because... I feel like she can talk at a level that I can understand. So thank you for coming on with me today, Trisha. Thank you for having me. Was it Trisha or Trish? I go by Trish, yeah. Okay, Trish. Or Trisha, either one. <laughs> <laughs> so Trish, let's call her Trish. So um, what to you, you know, how do you explain to people what a keto diet is? So the keto diet for dogs and for people, both, both species use it, is a diet that is designed to train your body to burn fat for fuel instead of glucose for fuel. So like you said, it's a diet high in fat, moderately low protein and low carbs. And I know that I've been told that like, it's not good for puppies to be on a keto diet. Do you know why that is? I, I, I completely agree with you. I don't think puppies should be on a keto diet. Um, they, you know, when puppies are born, these little cute little fuzzballs, they are getting the milk from their mom, you know, their nursing. That milk is loaded with sugar. And that's to help these cute little fuzzballs grow pretty quickly, you know, in, in six weeks. So it's, it's kind of like this burst of, of glucose to help them to grow. Well, then after that, they're carnivores. They need protein. They need protein to keep continue growing. So to put a growing puppy on this diet, I don't recommend it. Now, the one, the one situation that I would think might, you might want to think about it, but you would really have to work very closely with an integrated vet is that you have a puppy that's fully grown, but it's having uncontrollably, uh, uncontrollable seizures. And that is something, again, I would work very closely with an integrated vet because that would be out of my league. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I completely lost my questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm not editing this out. <laughs> so um, we do know that dogs with cancer are doing well on a keto diet. And so, and from what I understand, sugar feeds cancer cells. So right. This, since it's going to be um, burning fat instead of glucose, right? Is keto diet starving the cancer. Then it is. I mean, actually, some cells like cancer cells cannot live on fat for fuel. So those cells literally starve. So, so on a keto diet, I mean, you know, when you have a dog with cancer, it's a great thing to try to starve that cancer. Now, it's not the cure-all, it's not the magic bullet. You know, if you have a dog that's in, you know, stage four cancer, loaded with cancer, that's a lot to ask just diet alone. But there has been cases that it's, it's really done well. So it is, it is really cool the way that it, it starves the cancer cells. Yeah, that is like so amazing. Cause I've heard stories of dogs that basically went back in and there is just no trace of cancer in their body. Right. Yeah, it's exciting. It's so cool to me. It's so mind blowing how this works. So how did you get into this? What drew you to a keto diet? So I have my great dame, Ava. She's nine and a half years old. You know, when I go to the vet, they're like, oh, you have a senior. I'm like, she's not a senior. She's only nine and a half years old. <laughs> so anyway, like two years ago, it was in October of 2016. She was having these very vague symptoms. She was never a dog to vomit. She never had a cough. And she just just randomly once in a while, but it was going on for several weeks. And I'm like, I'm going to take her in. I thought maybe she swallowed a treat, had something stuck in her esophagus brought her into a new vet because we had just moved out to Colorado, went in and this vet was amazing. He wasn't an integrative vet, very open-minded. He knows how I feel, you know, about natural approaches. So I told her, told him her symptoms and he's like, have you found any new lumps or bumps? And I'm like, well, that's kind of an odd question. 
So I said, no, I go and I check her, you know, granted, she's a great Dane. There's a lot to check. So anyway, he's like, okay, well, let's start with blood work. He brought her in the back and told the tech, we need to find a lump or a bump on this dog. I think she has a mast cell. So just from that vague thing. So sure enough, she had mast cell. We did have the tumor removed. We got clean margins. And for almost a year, she was symptom free. Then all of a sudden, her symptoms came back with a vengeance. She developed this cough that wouldn't go away, but her heart was fine. Her lungs were fine. And then we had this episode in January that I had to rush her to the emergency vet because, of course, it happened on a Sunday. Um, she couldn't breathe. So we think they, they put her down as, as probable pneumonia because if the mast cell has, has went into her lung, it's not like you get this big tumor. It's more diffused. So they couldn't say that it was actually pneumonia, but they couldn't say it was cancer either. We treated her for pneumonia. The cough continued. So that's when three, well, actually it's going on four months ago. I said, you know what? I'm going keto. I'm getting rid of this. If this is cancer, I'm doing it. And so she's been in ketosis. It's going on four months now. Yeah. And how's she doing? Amazing. Now the cough continued for the first two months, but now we have not heard her cough in several weeks. So that to me tells me that it probably was the cancer and her energy level is amazing. She looks amazing. Fantastic. Oh, that's, that's so amazing to hear. I just, I love stories like this. So um, can you tell me what is like, what is a typical meal for your dog? Okay. So let's use Ava as, as an example. She's 115 pounds. So when I first put this diet together and put it in her bowl, I'm like, okay, I did something wrong. This is so not enough food for her because it, it was literally just a little bit over a half a cup of ground beef a lot of oil, and then a little bit of vegetables, and that's it. So it's, it's, it is very high fat. And the thing is, is when I first fed it to her, she was like, that's it. But within two days, the high fat kept her sustained, that she oh, wow. was feeling full. She was fine. Oh, that's so interesting, because I think that that was m one of my misunderstandings of the diet, is that you're kind of still feeding the same that you're feeding with a, a traditional raw diet. Okay. But you know, you're just changing the, um, like, it's just more fat. More fat. And yeah. that's, that's a lot of people do think that way. But the thing is, is that you have to bring that protein down because, okay, cancer's first line of, of fuel is sugar. And then when that's taken away, there is an amino acid in protein called glutamine. And mm -hmm. cancer could actually live on glutamine. Okay. So if you still have high protein and low carb, that cancer still has a fuel source. So you want to get that protein way down because you want the fat to be the main fuel, which cancer can't live on. So what other things, when people are um, considering keto, what other reasons will drive, draw them to keto besides cancer? It's, it's got several things. I mean, the, the number one thing that I've seen it used for is pets that have seizures. Mm -hmm. and, and they use it actually, my, my, one of my nieces, well, several of my nieces are nurses, and the one works with children, and they actually, children that have uncontrolled seizures, they will put in the hospital on a keto diet, which is really cool to me. Um, but dogs that have seizures, they will do that and have really good results. Um, another thing is diabetes. You know, you, you bring down that glucose and then you could get the insulin, insulin sensitivity increased, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually use it for a dog to lose weight or a dog to gain weight. Um, and me personally, I believe that you can use it as a cancer preventative because if you have just tiny little cancer cells in your body and several times a year you put your dog on, into ketosis, you're, you're, you're starving them cancer cells. So before they get into something huge, you're, you're killing the cancer off. Nice. nice. So, um, I know that like a lot of people today, or I shouldn't say today, but I have a lot of friends who are raw feeders who, um, either intermittently fast. So like they're feeding once a day. And so their dogs are basically fasting 24 okay. hours a day, you know, besides that one meal. And then there are people who fast once a week. And so I am, is that kind of a form of ketosis or do you still need to like do a blood test to confirm that your dog is in ketosis? You really, I mean, you really do have to confirm that they're in ketosis, especially if you're doing it for the reason of cancer, because you want to make sure that that 
that their body is burning fat for fuel. So if you, I mean, fasting a dog is excellent. And in the ketogenic diet, you could feed, like I feed Ava twice a day. Um, some people only feed once. You could do it once a day and still fast that whole day. That's excellent. Um, but either way, you want to make sure that they're in nutritional ketosis. So how do you do the testing? So you're going to need, well, two meters or one meter that does both. So I, I have this out just to show. <laughs> this yeah. is a, a glucose meter. And no, I'm sorry, this is the ketone meter. So I got this from Amazon and I could send you the links to it. This actually has the ability to check both, but you need two different testing strips to read the glucose and the ketones. So I got just a separate, to me, it's easier just to have two because it's one blood draw and I try to get the blood at the same time and I don't have to worry about taking this strip out, putting another strip in. Um, the other thing is that you're going to want to lance it. To, to get the blood, you just need a drop of blood, but I'm telling you, I think my Ava was a vampire because they said that you could get blood from their ears and they say to warm the ears up and then just do a little lancet poke. I poked that poor dog, I think six times. She's just sitting there letting me do it. And I'm like, where is your blood, woman? <laughs> so finally, I just lifted up her lip. And, you know, Great Danes have a lot of slobber. So I kind of dry it off because I don't want the slobber mixed in with the blood. Poked her. Beautiful. She didn't even feel it. Okay. And I got the blood. And so you want to, when you check it, you want to make sure that they're in range. So um, Keto Pet Sanctuaries, is, they're the ones that are the, the huge people on the keto diet. They have a range that you want their glucose to be between 50 and 90, and you want their ketones to be between 0.3 and 1.4. Okay. Okay. Gosh, I'm going to try that out and just to, like, to test my dogs to see where they are today. Yeah, absolutely. Just to see where, because that would be so fascinating just to see you know, how my dogs are. So how, how often do you test your dog? When I, when you first start this, like I said, you want it, like Ava was already on the raw food diet. So it didn't take her long to go into ketosis. So she, at the beginning though, you want to test quite a bit to see where you're at, to see if you have to adjust anything. Once they're in ketosis and, and you're testing and their numbers are staying pretty stable, then I went down to twice a week. And the other thing is that when you test, I personally think it's best to test at the same time. I always test Ava right before her second meal. Okay. Because during the day, your ketones and your glucose can fluctuate with meals, with activities. So I, I thought, you know, this, she's on a pretty regular schedule. I'm going to yeah. test at the same time. Fantastic. Fantastic. This is so fascinating to me. I, I'm, I'm in love right now. So I'm trying to think. Um, I Forgive me, people who are watching. I have my questions here, and my <laughs> phone keeps re like shutting down, and then I have to touch it again. Oh, yay! This is a good question. So <laughs> vegetables. I know I heard you say vegetables that you have you added vegetables to the meal. So, yes. what are the role of vegetables in a keto diet? So the vegetables are going to be considered your your carbs and you're going to keep them extremely low so there are vegetables but the vegetables that you use you're going to want to use very low um, glycemic index vegetables such as green beans um, broccoli cabbage so no starchy vegetables and it's very low so it's you know i mean you want to make sure that that you're not feeding you know a sweet potato right so, so there are vegetables and yeah, so, and Ava loves her vegetables, so I didn't take that away from her. <laughs> Fantastic. And I, I have this really good question right here. Oh, okay, so I keep hearing from people who are told that their dogs need to be on a low protein diet. So is a keto diet an option for those dogs? It, it is a very low protein diet, so that would be an option. I mean, the other thing that I would have to ask is why they have to be on a low protein. A lot of times when dogs have kidney issues, the vets will say we need to lower the protein. And it's not so much that that protein needs to be lowered, it's the quality of protein needs to be raised. Right. Now your, your, your kidneys are the main source of detoxing, so you want to make sure that, that they're on a very high quality protein. Oh so my God, it makes so much sense too. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's, it's like kidney issues, they're carnivores. They need their protein, 
But if you're feeding really bad protein sources, then kidneys have to work overtime. And if they're already stressed, that's not a good combo. Oh my gosh, that's so fantastic. So, you know, when it comes to keto, I mean, should you get another dog tomorrow? Would you feed this dog the same way? Well, here's the thing is that in keto, in the keto diet, there's, there's what's called ratios. It starts at four to one, three to one, two to one, one to one, and 0.5 to one. <laughs> so the, just this kind of, I'm going to get to your, your, the answer to your question, but kind of take the long route. Sure. So the four to one is for like my vet re just referred someone to talk to me about the keto diet because she has a little 12 year old um, Shih Tzu that has a huge mess on her liver. They gave her two to six months to live. And he's like, she wants to try everything. So I said, will you talk to her? So this dog needs to be in ketosis yesterday. I mean, she, she's, this is an emergency. So that's when you use the four to one ratio. And what that ratio means is that it's going to be four times the fat to one part protein and carbs combined. Okay. So and their bowl is going to look like a bowl of oil. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fat, but we want her to go into ketosis as quickly as possible. That, that ratio, I would not keep them on very long. From there, I would either go to a 3.1 or a 2.1. Ava, I started her on a 2.1 and she went into ketosis pretty quickly. So 2.2 to 1, just to describe, like if you take a plate and you divide it into thirds, because you have the fats, the protein, and the carbs, you divide that plate into thirds, two thirds of that, the 2 to 1, two thirds of that is going to be fat. The other one third is going to be the protein and the carbs combined. Okay. So that's what the, the ratios mean. Now, the good thing is, is that Ava, and this is really interesting in this, <laughs> I hope I'm not getting over, over, over excited on this, but Ava, when she was in this, her body started to be so efficient in burning fat for fuel that when I start doing her testing, her ketones kept going up to the point that she was going out of the range that Keto Pet suggested. So I actually contacted them saying, what am I doing wrong? And they're like, no, that's fantastic. You know, don't worry about it. But then I had the opportunity to talk to Daniel Arrego. I always yes. want to say Oregano. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he, he was by a, a store not too far from my house. And I, I asked him about it and he said, you know, because she's so efficient in burning the fat for fuel, let's lower her down to a 1.1. Mm -hmm. So I did like two weeks ago, she's still in ketosis. I raised her protein, lowered her fats, and she's still at a 0.8, which is beautiful. Oh, the thing yeah. is, is that she's getting near the end of her four months. So I don't want to just go back to her old diet and want this cancer to come back. So if you go to a 0.5 to one, which is the lowest ratio, that ratio mimics very closely the prey mode in the raw food feeding, mm -hmm. so as far as protein and fat, so that they could stay on indefinitely. Okay, so that, thank you so much for going into those ratios, because that is the one thing that was so confusing to me, because I didn't understand what it meant. Yes, and, um, it, it is. I mean, at first, I'm like, I, I don't get it. Yes, yes, <laughs> and I'm a numbers person, but I was just like, I don't know, I don't understand, I don't <laughs> understand, but yeah, that sounds like really fantastic, because I know a lot of people, because of the, you know, the dog cancer series. And because, you know, we're in our Facebook feed every week, we, he we see that someone's dog has been diagnosed with That's cancer. And sad. this is like a regular topic within our community. And so it's natural for people to say, well, then I just want to put my dog on a keto diet. But my concern, because I look at my dogs and it's like, well, would I be doing more harm than good? So it's nice to know that there is like, yeah, there is a range. It, is, it isn't just a one size fits all diet. Exactly. Right. And, and like using Ava again as an example, you know, I mean, I want her to be in strong nutritional ketosis at this point and seeing that her body was efficiently doing this, able to lower that made me happy, made her happier. She got more beef. <laughs> so, um, What's next? I mean, will you take her in and like get blood work done? What will you do next for her? You know, I, I honestly, I don't, I, I had the blood work done before we started this because I wanted to make sure that her pancreas was, you know, in, in good shape and all her blood work, her blood work from being on a raw food diet is perfect. And now since I'm blogging about this, 
I think just for the sake of the blog and to show people, you know, look, she's still doing great. I am going to run blood work again and just, and, and have my vet check her lungs. I'm not going to do x-rays again because being a large a giant breed, when they get her on the table, she always feels a little bit tweaked afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just going to have her listen, have him listen to her lungs and see how she's feeling. So and but you, mentioned, you mentioned the pancreas. A lot of people are concerned that a keto diet would cause pancreatitis. Is that not obviously not the case? No, and here's here's the thing, and and with this this little Shih Tzu that I'm helping now, I was a little concerned because you know obviously we're in emergency mode with her mode mode with her, but the the thing is is that this dog was on kibble, just a pick up at the grocery store kibble. So that in itself could cause, you know, I mean, I had dogs years ago before I was feeding raw fed that went into pancreatitis just from being on low quality food. Mm -hmm. So, so her going from that to a four to one ketogenic diet, I'm like, Oh, I'm a little bit nervous. You know, is she going to go into pancreatitis? But the thing is, is that that the, when the pancreatitis happens is that when you're cooking those fats, their, their risk of pancreatitis is much higher. Okay. So when you're feeding high quality, good, I mean, I'm talking olive oil, MCT oil, coconut oil, you know, the good high quality one, the risk of pancreatitis is very low. And so let's talk about fat. Okay. And you know, I keep coming up with questions. I keep saying, okay, this is my last question, but this is so <laughs> fascinating to me. Um, so I know that like in my freezer, cause I was I want to um, put my dogs on, you know, a, I call it a low dose keto diet. So okay. um, I stocked up on grass fed, grass finished butter. Okay. And, um, so, but so, and I know that, you know, yet, yeah, like you said, there's olive oil, coconut oil, MCT oil, there is butter. What other forms of fat? I mean, can you do animal fat? You know, they, they, no, I, I would stick with the, the pastured raised butter, like you got the heavy, you know, pastured raised heavy cream people do. Now, Ava never had dairy or anything like that. So I just stuck to, it. the other thing is that if you're having trouble getting the dog into ketosis, MCT oil is the bomb. I'm telling you that gets them into ketosis pretty darn quick. So MCT oil, and that's derived from coconut oil, um, an organic coconut oil, olive oil, avocado oil. These are all excellent choices. Fantastic. Wow. So if I were to do this tomorrow, besides ordering the two gadgets that you showed me earlier, yeah. what would be the first step that you would recommend for me? So here's the thing is that what I did was I went to ketopetsanctuary.com, their website, and I read everything I could on that website. Well, they actually have this lovely tool that is a calculator that you put in your dogs, you know, if your dog's too skinny, average weight, or too you know, heavy, thick, we'll say. Um, you put the activity level in, and then you pick what meat you want to use, what oil you want to use. It's very basic. They're like, you know, pick one of these three, and then you hit calculate, and it gives you the diet. Oh, nice. The only problem that I had with the calculator is that I feel like when you're, just like with the kidneys, when you're fighting something like cancer, you need to get rid of every toxin possible. So I want to use the top quality ingredients that I can. So I want only organic vegetables. I want only organic oils and I want grass fed pastured meats. So the big problem is, is that with the key, and here's the, the calculator is wonderful, but it uses a 70 to 30% meat hamburger. So that's pretty fatty. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's great. And it's human grade. You go to your store, you get it, you can use that and it's going to work. But like I said, my philosophy is I want the pasture raised. I want the high quality, highest quality to fight this thing. So the problem is, is that it doesn't have a calculator for 8550, mm -hmm. which is grass fed meat. It's, it's more lean. So my husband, who's the brain in the situation, like she, he's good with numbers with you. I mean, I'm like, I don't know what to do, you know? So he actually calculated that all out for me. And the thing is, is that he's going to try to make a calculator. So if people come to me that I could say, okay, give me all your dog's information. And if you want to use this grass fed beef, I could tell you how to adjust them ratios. Nice. So that is, yeah. So people can email me or message me and, and I can help them with that. Oh, that's so fantastic. So 
Thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. I'm glad we're actually wrapping up because I hear my boyfriend outside starting up something very huge. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if, if it's translating, but the house kind of vibrated a little bit. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, this but was great. Be, this was so fun. Oh, I'm thank you so fun. much. So please tell people where they can find you again. And I have a Facebook page. It's Baby Steps to Healthier Pets, People, and Home. Um, we are making a web page and a YouTube channel that I could send you the links to. That would be fantastic. Thanks again and have a fantastic day. Thank you. You have a great day too. Okay guys, I'm back because I had another question, of course. Thank you so much for Trish for chatting with me. Um, so let's talk about green tripe. One thing I do know is that green tripe is a high fat food, but since I don't really know how much fat is in green tripe, what do you think about um, using green tripe as part of a keto diet? So I do think that you can incorporate it with it. But the thing is, is that when you're going through that four months period of when you're really trying to get them into ketosis and fight the cancer, I think we should keep it as simple as possible and just stick to the one protein source for them four months. After that, when we start to lower the ratios, I think it's a great option to, to add in different protein sources, including the tripe. Okay, awesome, thank you. Thanks guys. <laughs>